Well, I think that's one of the important things that gardens need to do is to kind of develop their own um, limits for what is a past, right? Um, I have these, I give a talk about pasts and, and uh, I have these Pavlis rules of pasts. Okay. <laughs> and and they, they basically go through and say, you know, sit down and figure out, first of all, what is the past? So I yes. see a lot of people online who say, I've got holes in this, How, what should I spray? Right, or I've got some marks on these leaves, what should I spray? Everybody wants to spray because they think it's a past. Yes. So step one is to figure out whether it really is a past. And if you were not able to see the past, then it's very likely not a past. Uh, it's most of the time a problem that you have is cultural, it's not a past. Um, then identify it so you know what you're spraying for and don't just spray whatever you want in the garden. And then decide whether it's a serious past. So the, the last week there was a lot of talk about uh, the, these large caterpillars on tomato plants, right? The, the hornwort yes. caterpillars. I mean, they're, they're huge, they're, they're kind of ugly looking. They do eat quite a few tomato leaves when you got one of those on your plant, but they also make a really nice big moth. And they are also uh, the food for a certain type of wasp. So a wasp will come along and lay its eggs on that caterpillar. Mm. And uh, the, the larvae live in the caterpillar and kill it. And if we get rid of all the caterpillars, we won't have any wasps either. Right? right, so we have to leave some of these caterpillars so we keep the predatory wasps around. That's right, because the wasps kill a lot of things. Actually, they do a lot of damage on caterpillars as a category, you know, like yeah, uh, wasps, yeah. Yeah, so what some people do is they'll plant an extra tomato plant or two, and they take their, their caterpillars and they move them over onto this sacrificial plant that's only being grown for them, and then they leave it. <laughs> right and that way it keeps the others clean right again it, it, i don't see that as a serious pass because i i have it maybe every second year i have some they're pretty easy to pull off when you do have them and either put them somewhere else or lay them on the the grass and let the the birds get them or something so i don't really consider that a big pass to have to do something about it right. is a pest i kind of have to keep my eye out for yeah. You don't want to leave your tomato plants for two weeks with those guys on it or you'll have nothing left. Yes. Um, many of the pests in the garden uh, are pests. They are doing some damage, but it's limited damage, right? You will still get a good crop. You will still be able to harvest your plant. Okay, well, maybe it's only 80% full size or, you know, the yield is only 80% of what it could be. But for backyard gardeners, that's really not an issue. Right. That's right. So pick your battles and only pick those paths that are really detrimental to the crop that you're trying to grow. That's true. I mean, I, I often think that, you know, by having having the pests around, you're going to have other things around that that like the pests. If you get rid of all the pests, then all the things that like the pests have no reason to come back to your garden, which means that you are the only solution for the pest now. Um, so if you think about it in a sort of an economy of effort point of view, it's better to get 80% output and have very little work than to get 100% but have to do all of the work yourself. That would be, hap you know, as opposed to wasps and ants or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the predator, wasps, toads, et cetera, beetles. Uh, sorting out your problem so and yeah I, I agree that you know if, if the pest is really like my potatoes are a perfect example they attack the foliage they yeah. don't attack it in a way that that compromises the productivity not to my I get potatoes the size of my fist right um, well you got a few less pounds last year than you could have had if you had zero pests I but suppose. the effort to get rid of those isn't worth it no right. exactly yeah. Um, another pest that comes up a lot are aphids, right? Aphids. People on things like beans, for instance. And again, I don't really have a big problem with that. And if I have them, I, I just spray them off the plant and I will have some aphids on there, but they don't do a huge amount, amount of damage. 
I still get more beans than I can possibly eat. And so I don't really consider that a pest either. And yes. of course, the aphids are the food for lady beetles, right? Yeah. And if we get rid of all the aphids, then you won't, won't have any late lady beetles in your garden because right. they have nothing to eat. So we have to always leave a little bit of food there. Hey folks, guess what? I've started a newsletter at maritimegardening.substack.com. I'll be putting out one article a week, that's 52 articles a year. The articles expand the ideas that I mention on my videos and podcasts. And every article has a read aloud option, so you can just listen to me read it if you're busy doing something else. You can subscribe for $30 a year or try it for 5 bucks a month and see what you think. It's a great way to help support everything I'm doing here. But hey, there's also free content too, so if you just want to read the free stuff, that's fine too. As always, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.